It was a pleasure to be in the conference on geographies of psychoanalysis. Uh, what I talked was as psychoanalysis travels. The idea was to look at psychoanalysis in a different culture than the cultures which are Western bourgeois culture, European cultures of 20th century in which it originated. So how does psychoanalysis work is looked upon, debated in a culture which has very different family systems, different mythology, different idea of what is divine, God, uh, different views of what a human life is, what is fulfilled human life, then from the original psychoanalytic version. So I looked at that through Indian lens, lens in India, but not through clinical case histories. Of course, there are many of those because clinical case histories actually do not say very much about a huge population of one billion people, where the 20 clinical histories can say anything about one billion. What one needs to look at, I think, is what I call cultural imagination. That is imagination or of products, cultural products like popular movies, mythology, legends, folk tales. So all those products of cultural imagination in which the psyche or psychic experiences can be seen. I was looking at, in this particular paper, only on one thing, on the representations of the maternal feminine in Indian culture and psychoanalysis, which is, which is absolutely, to my mind, huge. Uh, in the sense that it is what I call maternal enthrallment, which has three elements. The first being separation from the mother and the wish to stay, conflict between that. Then the conflict of an engulfing mother and to get away from her. And then in the male child, the incestuous sexual wishes uh, towards the mother and also the terror of the sexually threatening mother. So what I looked at was Indian myths, the common ones, which most people know, have heard of, and in fact repeat uh, sometimes in their clinical situation uh, in all those three uh, through the myths. My final take, of course, is uh, the idea, which is not mine, I mean, which is, I think, quite common, that culture is not a substrate uh, of uh, unconscious, uh, that unconscious and cultural co-create each other like yin and yang. And this is also true neurobiologically. I looked for, gave the example, for instance, of the muller lyre illusion, where your visual pers depth perspective is really shaped by the cultural uh, constructions in which you grow up. Uh, ch children who grow up in round hearts do not have the muller lyre illusions than most people who do grow up in rectangular houses. So culture really, if that shapes even your visual perception, and uh, by culture I don't mean the ideas and legends, etc., but the way you live, the, what you eat, what you see, what you hear, or what you are taught to see and hear, then how much more it would be shaping the unconscious which ex exhibits itself or comes manifests itself in the psychoanalytical cultural reports.